Hi, um, in this video we'll tackle one of the main variations of the alkyne in our case. Um, so the first surprise that we know of is that after e4, knight of 6 pawn to e5, instead of making the very main move, knight to d5, I'm suggesting a very surprising weapon, a very strange looking move, honestly. If someone had told me about it once uh, when I was, you know, uh, climbing my way to the tit uh, to the uh, titles, I would I would find it quite funny. But actually, nowadays nowadays somehow apparently many things are very playable. It turns out. So we're gonna go knight to g8. Now, I don't want to kind of make a false impression and say this is the you know ultimately best way to handle the alakine. However, in fact, I don't think this move is as bad as it looks, and. White can claim advantage objectively, just as in Alakine after knight d5. However, it's just a you know, small advantage, not a huge one, like, say, third to half of a pawn, which I think is absolutely okay. However, we get to cut an, on an insane amount of theory, because, for example, after knight d5, d4, d6, you need to know stuff like bishop c4, stuff like c4, stuff like c4, knight b6, and here e d6, f4, or here is a classical system with knight f3, and there's really a lot, and why it chooses. Now, after knight to g8, you cut down on pretty much all the existing theory, and white doesn't really get to choose what he wants to do. He has to play pretty much one of the two systems, and will be ready for both. So, after d4, white can play knight f3 as well, but after d6, I don't think he has anything better than taking or playing d4, which is what we're about to see shortly. So, d4. And here d6. Now, white has two princi principled um, ways to handle the position. He can play either knight f3, which will be the topic of the different video, or take on d6, releasing the tension. Um, it's also possible to make the move f4, which we'll discuss in a different video, but for now let's focus on ed6. Now, what's good for us, and that's exactly one of the reasons why I like this alakine with knight g8 a lot, is that we get to choose how to continue. Uh, so it's possible to play both cd6, which has been more popular, and ed6. In fact, I myself have, have almost always played ed6. I've mostly used the system in Blitz and Rapid, but nevertheless, I've played ed6 on a lot of occasions. So let's just compare for a second. So there is a line which runs like this. Knight to d5, d4, d6, and for example, c4, knight b6, e takes d6. Now, black can play both e d6 and c d6. Well, in our case, after e d6, for example, we make some move c4, well, the knight happens to be not on, you know, d5, where it gets kicked out, but on g8. So, you can just go back to f6, for example, right? And also, we can actually keep the knight here for a bit, because maybe it'll go to e7 later on. So, um, in this position will discuss both ed6 and cd6. Let me start with ed6 because that's a move I personally really like a lot. Now, white gets a well, a number of, white can continue in an uh, in a number of ways. He can play just let's say knight f3 h3, trying to restrain the bishop prevent bishop g4. He can play for example bishop d3 knight e2. He can play c3 or he can plant the pawn on c4. <laughs> so let's see what white can do. Now, one game that had this that had to reach this position between a grandmaster and a, an international master saw the move d5, which I personally consider just a positional mistake. Because after g6, black just got a fabulous version of, you know, some Benoni King's Indian sort of thing, where the bishop was absolutely gorgeous. Now, white castled, black castled h3, bishop f5. In fact, I think had black gone, let's say, rook e8. And say if c4, then just knight e4, he would just already be significantly better, surprisingly. The knight's coming to c5, the pawn's coming to a5, and so on and so forth, and black is just better. For example, white cannot easily play knight c3, this bishop cannot come out, this doesn't look right, that's not how white's position should be after the opening. For example, white plays, let's say, rook e1, okay, just knight d7. Say you wanna play bishop d3, okay, knight c5. Say bishop c2, okay, say a5 looks good to me. And yeah, white is just stuck. This is a very typical way of how things get wrong for white. Now, um, white can continue in some other ways as well, of course. But generally speaking, if he plays d5, the bishop here really proves 
uh, it's worth a lot. So, if white goes c4, I think there are two ways how black can play. It's possible to go knight f6, let's say, knight c3, bishop e7, and play a position like this. For example, say bishop d3, or h3 possibly, and then we can just play, say, d5, and we'll get some sort of, what is it, some um, French exchange, or some Petrov sort of structure, where um, we are likely to get an isolated pawn and play a very normal standard position where white might be some sort of a tempo up because we played d6 and then d5, but these positions are just very good for black, so being a tempo down might promise white a little something, but it's not really a big deal and black can definitely play this way. But, but, I personally really like the idea to play g6. And after, say, knight c3, bishop g7, white needs to be very careful, because if he just plays ignorantly, then it's likely that he'll run into bishop g4. And now his center already starts actually running into a lot of pressure. For example, if white plays h3, we can just take, take, knight c6, and white's position is already simply bad. For example, d5, check, bishop e2, knight d4. Now, black can take, black threatening a check, the black bishop is amazing, and let's say after queen d3, we can just swap everything, let's say queen e2, then we have bishop c3 with a better endgame due to the pawn structure, we have queen e2, let's say if knight e2, then just say king d7, black's bishop is much better than the white one, maybe when some b5 is about to come followed by a6, or rook b8, knight e7, this rook's coming over, and all the pieces are working, black is simply better. This is no bueno for white at all. Uh, so that's not how white should play. And white can play differently here, like bishop e2, but generally speaking, I think once the bishop comes to g4, we shouldn't have any problems. For example, knight e7, h3, again we just take, take, knight c6, and if bishop e3, there is knight f5, or say castling first, and then knight f5, or knight f5 first, and the white center again, and all the dark squares in white's position are just under so much pressure, white is simply already worse, and I would actually say significantly worse. So this is not gonna do well. Then, uh, white can continue with a move like h3, but again, after knight e7, for example, knight f3, I get it, white stopped the move bishop g4, but he had to pay a tempo, which is quite a lot. Let's say bishop e2, black can continue with, say, a move like knight f5 even. Or maybe even, you know what's interesting, instead of knight f5, because there is bishop g5, which is a little irritating, maybe even a move like h6, and save castling, then, for example, knight c6. And, for example, with bishop e3, we've definitely got knight f5, and... White can actually get, you know, it can actually hurt, because the bishop needs to stay there and protect d4, but black's gonna take, his bishop will prove monstrous, black will be better. So, this position is not really the way white, you know, not really something white should be looking for. So, generally speaking, if white goes c4 in a position like this, in my opinion, this is a huge gift, immediately black's play pays off. Now, most white players will make a move like knight f3 here. Well, then you can continue in a bunch of ways as well. We can also play, say, knight f6, and then after c4 again, we can just play, you know, uh, bishop e7, castling, d5, and so on and so forth. It's also interesting to check out what happens if we go g6. Well, here, unfortunately, we are late, because if castling, bishop g7, then rook e1 is going to screw us over, our position will just be very, very bad, we cannot do that. So here we'll have to play bishop e7, but again, I really don't see any particular concerns. Like, we can argue that maybe white is somewhat more active. For example, c5 is an interesting move, or say d5. And yeah, white is like slightly better, however, a position like this, I don't really think we need to be concerned. Black should be doing alright. Maybe white has some tiny pressure, not a big deal. Um, yeah, but also it's interesting to consider playing g6 right away. And if bishop d3, we put the knight, the knight on e7, and then after casting bishop g7, and because our knight did not go to f6, because instead it went to e7, we are perfectly on time to achieve ev ev uh, everything we need. And black's position here, while, again, objectively, I think, to play knight f6, bishop e7, and d5 is a more sound way of playing it. However, this position is also absolutely playable, and white might be a teeny bit better, but we get a fighting position with a little bit of um, 
a symmetry where black keeps his pawn on d6, meaning he can always play d5, but he can also play c5, or he can play knight c6, and this is still, this is complicated and this is interesting. For example, rook e1, castling, say bishop g5, knight c6. Now, let's say if white makes a move like knight d2, okay, black immediately gets the initiative, say h6, bishop back, g5, bishop here, and just knight d4, and black just won a pawn, cannot do that as white. And say bishop e3, for example, something like knight b4, and white's getting kicked, let's say bishop goes back, and now bishop f5, for example, c3, knight c2, white just loses, or rook c1, knight a2, white loses, this is just very bad, surprisingly. Or let's say bishop c4, now possibly move like knight d5, the bishop is getting t taken, so white shouldn't be playing like this. Or say white makes a move like c3, again, same story, h6, now white needs to go somewhere back, because if he goes to e3, I get knight f5, or I get bishop f5, let's say chop, chop, and I don't see any problems. Black can play queen d7, rook e8, possibly play knight e7, or around the knight somewhere, and I just think black is absolutely okay. Even it's possible to go g5, knight e7, and here knight to g6, and then say queen d7. And in fact, after something like this, black can be ready for some advance or some, you know, sort of harassment on the king side, like g4 later on and so on. And this is just a totally adequate position for black. I'm absolutely thrilled about it. I think there are no concerns. Um, so, yeah, this looks interesting to me. Now, um... Objectively speaking, the best way for white to handle this would be to play something like, say, knight c3, and if, say, bishop g7, something like, for example, bishop g5, perhaps, knight e7, and... But here, I mean, I, I also think it is absolutely okay. Like, let's say, bishop d3, okay, we got to play h6 again, knight f5 later. Or maybe white can consider playing some move like, say, bishop d3 here, but after knight e7, again, well, white might... Generally, white wants to play it with a knight on c3, but that's not an obvious thing, because it looks like the pawn craves support. But after, say, castling, castling, rook e1, or maybe knight e4, like, maybe that's how white's looking to play. But, generally speaking, I, again, I don't see it as a, you know, I don't perceive it as an issue. For example, we can even just play d5, knight g3, and just make some normal developing move here, like, say, knight d7. And, yeah, white might be somewhat better, but this is absolutely playable. Or we can keep the tension with some move like knight c6, c3, and for example play h6, stopping bishop g5, later rook e8, knight f5, with an interesting position. Again, this is not supposed to be a grandmaster level preparation for some, you know, grandmaster closed event. This is supposed to be an interesting opening for a club player to enjoy and to have a lot of, you know, interesting fight and interesting games in, and I think you're guaranteed to, I think you're, per, you're absolutely going to get a, a lot of interesting positions here. But, yeah, so I, I don't really see any problems with it. Uh, but, in case if you're interested in something else, I can also offer you the move CD6. And that's what many players, such as Amabi Diarov recently, or, for example, um, I'm, I think he's an international master, but he is definitely very close to claiming his GM title. Um, player with last name Admiral from the Netherlands has played this line as well, versus... Um, the German Grandmaster Hüschenbeth, who actually is, well, you know, over 2600 and a very strong theoretician, and he went on to win. So the game here continued c4, and here, in fact, I'm going to discuss a couple of possibilities. So one is to go knight f6, and after knight c3 to play, for example, e6, and that's exactly how this game continued. It went knight f3, bishop e7, white developed, and here it's fair enough to say that white is somewhat better, Maybe I would actually play a move like bishop b7 first, and after rook e1, I would possibly consider h6, and if bishop h4, then we always have this idea with knight h5, forcing the trade and coming to f4. Say knight d7 is also good. Um, he started with knight d7, and later... This maneuver is already something I don't necessarily like. I think a plan like h6 would have been smoother. And if bishop h4, then again, the idea to play knight h5, or the idea to play d5, and go for an isolated pawn structure like this, appeals to me a lot, and I think black is doing absolutely all right here. There are no concerns at all. Not a normal isolated pawn position. 
Um, so yeah, that would have been okay. He continued knight f8, which I think is somewhat passive. Yet, uh, he got a position where, while white was better, he needed to be careful. For example, I think white can make a move like a4 and try to make some progress with rook a1, a5. But he needs to be careful, because once the rook leaves the c file, there could be possibly some tactics with like d5 or like knight d5, and there could be a problem with the knight. White played d5, and black actually immediately got a very decent position, in my opinion, here. Well, it turned out white's pawn is in fact very weak. Say if he were to take after d5, the bishop goes to d6, the pawn is very weak, and black is just better, the pawn is in fact just falling right now. So bishop d4 was played, and then black could have just taken here. And I think after something like, say, knight d5, bishop d5, rook c8, queen c8, for example, takes, 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 bishop e6, it's obvious black has no concerns, it's just an equal position. Bishop f6 is coming, rook d8 is coming. And in fact, I would strongly um, I would strongly suspect white needs to be rather cautious here. Because, you know, things might get somewhat ugly, things might get tricky. White still has some pieces that are hanging. Even the b4 pawn is hanging, guys. We need to be careful as white. So, yeah, that would have been totally fine. Now, he continued knight d7, and... Maybe it, it was somewhat wrong, white could have played, let's say, a4, and now the pawn is not hanging, and white can get some play going, like we, maybe later a5 or something. But, um, actually, white immediately went wrong as well, and black here found a very strong idea. How did black continue now? Uh, what should black do? Alrighty, I hope you took some time to think. So black has a very nice way to improve his position. Um, which piece is not playing? Well, this bishop deserves some love. Let's give it to him. Bishop g5. Now, the bishop is becoming a great piece. Black's possibly wanting to take and then throw a knight on c4 or something. And after, say, g3, which is exactly what white played. Well, this was a terrible blunder. Black just took. And what is the problem if queen d2, guys? How does black win? Okay, that was, that was simple, just knight f3, and there is a fork. So, white made a blunder, but actually it's not that easy to stop this idea. Like, white can make some move like rook c2, but then, okay, now the knight can jump onto f6, now the pawn is hanging again, now this is a problem, now this knight finds itself misplaced, now there are some issues over the c-file, white's, in my opinion, already just worse. So, yeah, that's how the game ended. Due to the uh, tactical blunder, white ended up giving a lot of material, and black just stayed the rook up and won. And this was a rapid game, so you can claim, well, it's not that relevant, but when we're talking about Grandmaster level chess, even in rapid, believe me, they play extremely well. Much better than, you know, any 2100 you would typically face in a tournament in classical chess. They would know more, they would calculate better, they would evaluate better, so it's still hugely illustrative. Now, um, there was another game as well, where black handled the position slightly differently. He continued with this plan of g6, which generally tends to be a more kind of fighting choice, which is something I obviously like. Um, in fact, there has been another Grandmaster game between Rosenthalis as white and uh, Grandmaster Hiatterson from Iceland as black, played in, back in 1994. Um, however, we wouldn't talk about this game right now. In fact, I wanted to, even though I'm going to uh, attach it in the PGN file, but right now we would focus on the on a different game, which saw Castling here, knight e2, knight c6, Castling, and at this point, black has a couple of possibilities. So, in one game he went bishop d7, in one game he went bishop f5, in one game he went a6, in some game he played e5. And actually, all these moves are really interesting, like let's say e5. Now, if for example white plays d5, knight e7, well, this is the typical position we want to get in the Aldekine, it's super fighting. The knight will come to f5, black can play for a6, b5, black can choose to play for f5, possibly. But, of course, I would look for play here, overall, the white bishop's very bad on g2. So, yeah, this looks absolutely okay to me. Um, but, yeah, black has some other continuations as well. So, in this game... I didn't want to really touch it, so to speak, but I would bring it up uh, briefly between uh, Rosenthalis and Hiatterson. It was a6, 
which I think is not really that accurate, but still, black played rook b8, and apparently white failed to kind of understand what was happening, because black got some very, very typical King's Indian counter play, and here, he was already just, you know, taking over. In fact, white should have obviously played somehow differently here, like maybe bishop b2, let's say b5, and now, for example, take, take, and now, let's say, knight f4, and white should be in control, even after, say, b4. This looks quite interesting, nevertheless, for black. But white played to move knight d4 and just, you know, got hit. And there followed another very strong move e5. And black was doing simply great. And yeah, just a pawn up for no compensation. And later on he went on to convert. Which clearly shows the position is complicated enough even for grandmasters to feel somewhat puzzled about it. Now, um, it's also interesting to take a look at this move bishop d7. White played b3, and here black continued queen c8, looking to trade the bishops. That's what he did. And, like, objectively speaking, white can keep some advantage, but, again, I don't think he played in a very energetic way. Actually, what black's doing is somewhat suspicious, I think, objectively. But, actually, even, even this way, black was still capable of keeping the position rather interesting. And, yeah, like, say, here, white could have maybe played more decisively with a move like f5. But it was a game between um, a player rated about 2100 versus a GM. Actually, a fairly, you know, senior GM rated below 2400, but perhaps White was quite scared. So he continued in a pretty lame way with the move g5. And here, Black actually already just took over. It turned out that White just weakened everything. Now this pawn is weak, the square on f5 is weak everything literally down the e-file is a problem and so on and so forth and later black went on to win a very nice game he continued rook e8 which was very obvious he continued rook e7 i think it was also worth some consideration to play rook c8 now black could have actually won the game and i would like to ask you how how could black win here by force Alrighty, I hope you took some time, guys. So here, the winning tactical move would have been bishop c3. Now, the rook is hanging, and if white takes with the queen, then we just take on e4, and of course, this should win. And on the other hand, if knight takes, then after rook e8, white's position is collapsing. Let's say white takes here, and then rook e3. Let's say rook e3, rook e3. And here, of course, it may not have looked easy, because it looks like white's about to queen. But because queen h3 is coming, the white king is absolutely defenseless. Let's say a b3, just mate immediately. Or let's say white goes, I don't know what, like f5. Well, black could even take the pawn, right? But queen e7 also wins. Queen g5 is now on the agenda. Say f6, queen e5. And there's just no way to stop mate. White is literally finding himself absolutely slaughtered like a lamb. So, yeah, that would have been <laughs> that would have been quite convincing as well. Black played in a different manner, but his advantage was still very, very um, long-lasting. White couldn't really, you know, fix the fact that the king has be had, had gotten so weak. And sooner than later, Black managed to sacrifice a pawn and then find some decisive tactics and just convert. Which, in my opinion, made it a very nice game. So... That's more or less something I wanted to demonstrate to you guys about the um, knight to g8 alakine in the line where white continues with the move d4 in this position and then takes. As I said, there's also a possibility to play knight f3 and there's also a possibility to play f4. However, um, that's something we'll be discussing elsewhere. So, literally, I actually have no idea... Well. You, I mean, we'll see in the chapter with knight f3, white can try to pose some theoretical problems, but if all white players were going ed6, I would actually really see no concerns, and I would even just play this line in a tournament game versus grandmasters, no problem, I would, I would, I would go for it any time, because black gets a wonderful opportunity to cut down on theoretical learning, he doesn't need to know anything, there are no trades, the position remains complex, and he can definitely pose a lot of practical problems. And many players actually, at, you know, below titled level player, or below, say, 2000 FIDE, they would have absolutely no idea of how to handle this. And I just showed to you how 2100 and even 2500 players simply collapse in these positions. So, that, I think, should... Uh, 
should hopefully instill um, some trust in this variation in you. And I definitely look forward to seeing you succeed in it. Now it's time for us to switch on, move on and look at the other systems. And I'll see you in the next clips.